holy sons of this Let us sing of our joys to be free. Did you have said? Yes! Oh no! Day 5, Ifogi to Agalogu. The local roosters beat commanding officer Gardam to the wake-up call. And you can put a bit of tape over it if you like. Yep. I'll grab that off. No, I'll just hold it up. I'm just going to get in the way of getting a few uh, I like the frames. Good. Right. Climb up towards <coughs> the higher ground with ammunition, guns, mountain guns, mortars. Having not had any more than maybe a handful of rice for a day. For it's a climb onto Mission Ridge. Such steep terrain that imagining battle here is near impossible. Before arriving at Brigade Hill, which together with Isurava is one of the most sacred sites on the track. We pay homage to the diggers that lost their lives 76 years later to the day. The company advanced past foxholes up the steep Mission Ridge and onto the grassy knoll of Brigade Hill, where Signalman Hudson led an emotional tribute to the 99 Australian soldiers who fell here, reading an ode to the unidentified fallen soldier, WX Unknown. The bank clerks, farmers and school teachers, the factory workers, jackaroos and mechanics who go to make up our patrols have changed in some indefinable way. The vapours of the jungle and fires of malaria have sapped the bronze from their faces, have drawn their muscular bodies to sinew. Their faded clothes are continuously mud-spattered, clammy with sweat and rain. The jungle stamps an indelible print on those who fight it, but guts, endurance, self-sacrifice and initiative, all stretched to breaking point, have left their imprint too. So that you could say, these men have the look of a great fighting man. The 39th had long been considered an inferior force, but after weeks of intense fighting on the track, they proved themselves to be ragged, bloody heroes. By this time, the 39th Battalion had been reinforced with experienced AIF troops of the 2nd 14th, who had already served in the Western Desert and in Syria. Like the troops, our communications are tested, but family reassurance and birthday messages get through, plus the all-important football scores. Game day, 80 minutes to the bounce at footy with Will, Jack and the lad, and the land say hi and keep up the good trekking. Go those Tiger boys. 45 minutes to the bounce. Getting excited now. National anthem, now we're ready. Raining heavily at the G. Tigers by eight, nine minutes in. Three quarter time. This is the last message. 7338. Tigers killing it. From Brigade Hill, the company navigated the steep and slippery 700 metre descent. Halfway down, the company's collective spirits were lifted, except those of aerial surveillance officer Sam. Can do a little jig. Okay, there's many messages that came back with the final score. <laughs> Sulls because we were continuing from last time, remembering it was 73.38 at three quarter time. It's a simple message, not really Sulls style, but Tigers by 31. Another prelim, Dusty best on. And then, a fighting fury we're from Tigerland. <laughs> in any Ali. weather you will see us with That's a it. grin. Hey! Risking head and shin. Hey! If we're hey. behind then never mind. We'll fight and fight and win for we're from Tigerland. We never weaken till the final siren's gone. Like the tiger of old. We're strong and we're bold. Oh, we're from Tiger. Yellow and black. We're from Tigerland. <laughs> it is a descent down into Manari village for lunch. At this point of the campaign, Chief War Correspondent Home exhibited some worrying signs of battle fatigue. For on two successive occasions, he was handed his poles by Papua and Deputy Captain Clarenson after leaving them behind. 
It is noteworthy that prior to departure to PNG, that CWO Home had been most vociferous in expressing his strong view that he did not need a Papuan porter. How much is this? Eh, yeah, 60. In the key. Yeah, 60. Oh, sorry. That's right. All together? Double it. Double it. 20? 100. Yeah. 20. Uh, you getting it, Adam? Yeah. What'd you get it down to? 60? 50. 50? Oh, bargain hunter. Here, Manari Village. Beautiful spot. Just waiting for Adam to finish haggling. Looking for my lunch, but I can't find them. Where are we? Where the bloody hell are we, Paul? I couldn't find it. Just turn up there, Paul, the smoke. Oro, oro, oro. Look at this fella. What no, 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 no. Cat dragged in. PNG colour. Then it's straight up the wall and down the other side. On the steepest descent encountered today, dubbed the wall, the company sustained its heaviest numbers of Papuan casualties, with Gary, Paulie and Elliot all taking tumbles. And in a rare lapse in his concentration near the bottom of the wall, Chief Engineer Dufty found himself performing a delicate gymnastics manoeuvre ending up with his feet pointing in opposite directions and both above his head. For the record, what I was stripping down. Giving the world just a little bit of a thrill. We've been, we've been, we've been desperate to see them pins for five days. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you my thunder thighs, though. Not at all. There's no race. I actually don't like the thunder. You're looking a bit fresher, Sean, than Liz? It's about 34 years fresher. <laughs> Straight out of the can, that one. Come back when you're 50, Sean. <laughs> My can's gone Mine. rusty, I'm afraid. Get him for the old fellas. And so, you got to grab the bay in the sand and get... Oh, it's a team effort, yeah? So, yeah. Kill the leak. 15 year old thing generated by Western State of Minari. Hey! At the bottom, the company enjoyed a refreshing break in the Vabalagi River, where a number of company members risked concussion injuries from the sheer force of the waterfall in order to snap the perfect photograph of themselves with Aerial Surveillance Officer Sanford's selfie stick. A big day with nearly 800 metres up and 1,100 metres down. After barely surviving the wall, the company was relaxing in the mess at Agulogu Camp when Private Carrick Jr. nearly took out the entire company when an unopened Heinz baked beans tin predictably turned incendiary in the campfire. Again, it would appear the boy had not been taught a key life lesson by his father. Fortunately, only Field Ambulance Officer Mackay and Aerial Surveillance Officer Sanford sustained minor shrapnel injuries and scald burns from the superheated ham-flavoured sauce. 